pistols out. <laughs> What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today is actually Sunday for all of you fathers out there. Happy Father's Day. Kennedy is gonna go to her father's later. Have some dinner, right? Yep. So today I thought it would be cool for Kennedy to teach you how to drive a manual for any of those females out there that wanna be taught by a female and how she learned how to drive manual and kind of the things she had to overcome and how she does it every day on a day-to-day -day basis. Here is a fun fact. First of all, not that many females drive manual these days. And here's a fun fact. My mother drove a manual. That's how she first learned how to drive a car. Rachel, my sister-in-law, Kevin's wife, she learned how to drive manual. That's how she drove all through high school and up until recently when she got when they got their first Jeep. And Kennedy, her first car is manual. That's pretty crazy. Like the three that is weird. females in my life all drive manual. That's weird. That's pretty rare, honestly. Like you have to comment down below if you have a female in your life or in your family that can drive a manual. That's pretty impressive. Your sister drives manual? Or did? No? Just you? Your mom? My mom taught me. Mom taught me. Okay. So, when did you first learn? Uh, when I got my first car. So, this is what happened. <laughs> <laughs> my mom called me and said, hey, we got you a car. Um, you're gonna love it and it was I've always wanted one and it was a Fiat I know and I was like oh you know so excited about it whatever and then I get to the house and uh, stick shift <laughs> and I literally told her I said mom I'm gonna take this back <laughs> I don't know how to drive this <laughs> and uh, she taught me in the church parking lot right behind my house and that's how I learned and that's, crazy. that's what happened. <laughs> it was crazy, but um, what was the hardest part for I'm you? Gonna say, I think that really the only the hardest part, and I probably this is for everybody, is just getting first gear down. Once you have first gear down, I think the rest is super easy. I mean, you just have to make sure you don't stall out, and then <laughs> the rest is there, you know. Um, but that was gosh. It took me, I mean, I learned fast because once you, once the light turns green and you're turning left in the middle of an intersection and you stall out right in the middle, yeah, you learn pretty quickly <laughs> um, to not do that anymore. <laughs> I've done that so many times and, you know, just the more you drive it and everything like that, uh, it definitely gets easier. And I think, I mean, every once in a while, maybe I'll stall out if I'm just not paying attention or I'm like, oh my gosh, I just told out. I haven't done that in a while. <laughs> um, but it happens, but yeah. Just getting over first gear, and I I think it's the hardest for everybody, or at least it was for me. But after I, after I got first gear down, then you're able to feel the car and hear the car when you need to shift it. Um, and you can't really mess up. I mean, I guess you can technically, but it's really easy to not mess up. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say when I first started, the biggest thing I would do, and I still do it sometimes, I always like just leave it in gear, like I'm ready to go at the light, because I'm afraid like when I when it turns green, I put it in gear and let the clutch out. I'm always afraid like that I'm gonna stall it right there because I'm trying to do it so quickly. I so think you I just did it. yeah, <laughs> well because I was ready because I, yeah. I hate I hate when like people like sit at the yeah, light. Yeah, exactly. I, I, yeah, I'm the same way. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna pull over and we're gonna kind of give you guys the basic cues. This is for anyone who's interested in learning how to drive a manual, maybe wants to see how other people drive manuals, which I'm always interested to see how like other people do it because everyone kind of has their own bad habits that they probably do or their own way of doing it. But when it comes down to it, like it's all the same thing. The biggest thing that I find when I jump into other people's cars that are manuals and I haven't driven a car I haven't driven that specific car is just finding that clutch release point like where the clutch has to be released at for the car to start moving forward and once you know that part you always then you can always just give it some gas and let it roll forward and then you can go from there so we're gonna pull over give you Kennedy's point of view because this is her teaching you guys how to drive manual first step of driving any manual you have to take a sip of a bang 
Okay, now I'm ready. Oh man, look at that! Can you hear it? It's so loud. Just kidding. <laughs> Safety first. Seatbelt. It's so hot. Turn the air on. Okay, so the basics. Can you hear me? It's hot, babe. Okay, so this is your emergency brake. This is your best friend for a standard car. Right here, now my car is Volkswagen. And so, reverse, you have to push in the clutch, cl push in the clutch, and then you push down and go all the way to the left corner, and that is reverse. Not all cars are like that. Every car is different, and the Fiat, and I, I can't remember, it was either underneath the five, or it was, I don't know, doesn't matter. Anyways, all cars are different, just depending on which car you have. I'm gonna show y'all how to go in reverse and then into first. So you're gonna, well, yeah, so you're gonna push your emergency brake down and then your car is in neutral, right? And my foot is on the brake always because if I let go of the brake, my car would roll and excuse how dirty my car is down there. So then you're gonna put your left foot all the way into the clutch, all the way. Foot is still on the brake. I'm gonna push down, go all the way into reverse. I know it's in reverse because of that. And then you're gonna let go of the brake. And at the same time, you're going to let go of the clutch and push down on the gas. Very slightly, you don't have to let go all the way because then you, you don't need to get too crazy with it. And then my foot is now back on the brake and my foot is, my left foot, is all the way pushed in on the clutch as well because I'm about to go into first. So we're gonna go into first. I'm no longer in reverse. Foot is coming off the brake and at the same time again, gonna push the gas and let go of the clutch just slightly, nothing too crazy. My foot is still kinda on the clutch till I put more gas into it and then I can slowly release completely and we are officially in first gear. Um, so the number one question that I actually get a lot, especially for my friends who don't know how to drive a stick, um, is they ask me, well, how do you know when you need to shift? And right now, I kinda, personally, I aim it between like zero to 10 or zero to 12, I guess, um, is first gear, 10 to 20 second. 20 to 30, third. So I just kind of base it off that. Or you can also listen to the car. So let me gas it and then I'll be able, then you'll really be able to know when you need to change gears. So I'm still in first because I'm just in a parking lot. I'm going nine miles an hour. It's really under 10. I feel like that's pretty good. So if you're ever in a parking lot, um, Walmart, United, anywhere like that, usually first and second is pretty good depending on how fast you're going. All right, so when you come to a stop as well, my foot is back on the clutch and on the brake. My car is in neutral. We're gonna go in first again. Foot is on the clutch. I'm in first gear. I'm gonna wait till this car passes. Oh, there's another one. It's fine. All right, foot is pressing on the gas, letting go of the clutch at the same time. All right, so I'm gonna rev it so y'all can hear hear that? That's bad. That's really bad. It's telling me you need to shift. <laughs> you don't want to do that because that is really bad for your car. Really, really bad. Okay, we're going to pull over. I'm going to show you how to do it again. Okay, so I'm coming to a complete stop. Foot is on the brake. And that's all it needs to be on is the brake. Let's say I'm on a stoplight. My foot just needs to be on the brake. I'm in neutral. So the light turned green. There's the car coming. I'm gonna push in the clutch, put my car in first, let go of the brake, and then at the same time, so this is my gas and this is my clutch. At the same time, you're going to push the gas and let go of the clutch, just like that. Which I guess would be like this, really. So you're gonna like this. <laughs> like that? <laughs> so you're gonna go. My feet are doing this. And now I'm gassing it. And a lot of the time, 
sometimes newer cars, and my Fiat also did this, it tells you when you need a shift. So if you don't want to listen to your car, it tells you right there, I need a shift to second. Just for gas purposes, you know? It wants to save gas for me, that's nice. But it's on the clutch. I'm gonna go to second. At the same time again, giving it more gas, letting go of the clutch. So you're gonna do that every time you have to switch gears, every time. Even if I have to, let's say I'm making a turn, so we'll do that. I'm gonna make a turn. Usually in neighborhoods, the speed limit is roughly around 30 miles an hour. I'm always gonna be in third. All right, so right here, making a turn. I'm gonna go into second, and you still, again, have to push in the clutch, and then I put in second and do the same thing. Then once I turn, I'm gonna give it some gas, let go of the clutch, and then, uh, cause usually when I turn, <laughs> which I'm a crazy turner, <laughs> but um, I always just put it in second gear. And now a lot of people also, they just put their car in neutral when they turn. Um, but I usually just always put it in second, um, just because I know, because I know my car, um, what speed I will be at or hitting once I'm done with my turn um, to give it more gas. So I usually always just leave it in second or I, I guess I just am getting ready to put it in second. Um, but a lot of people also just ride it, ride their turns in neutral, which is totally fine. And then they put it in a gear once they're done with their turn. Um, but it doesn't matter, it's the same thing really. Okay, so another good question is, is what do you do when you're at a hill at a dead stop? Um, and you would just give it more gas. You might rev it a little more. And um, I'll show you what that sounds like. And I do that when it's flat, so I'm not the only one that doesn't do that. But, watch. Well, let's see if I can do it, which I say I can do it, but. Oh, that's a good one, right Ooh, there. Yeah. That was that was rough, I'm sorry, Jim. That'll get you up a hill. That'll get you up a hill. <laughs> <laughs> but you just give it a little bit more gas than you usually would. And it'll get you right, it'll get you up there. <laughs> I'll say a trick that I learned when I was younger is actually, have you ever done that where you hold the e-brake? No. To keep you from rolling back? Because a lot of new cars have anti-roll systems in it where they don't roll back. Have you driven a new car that has a manual? No, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> so there's newer cars that have this because it's pretty prevalent in Jeeps and things like that. They like to roll a lot when you're in neutral. Well, everything does when you're on a hill, but especially Jeeps. So you can hold the e-brake actually up a little bit to keep you from rolling back, and then as you start going forward, you can actually let go of the e-brake. I didn't know that. That's yeah, cool. so that's a little trick that I learned when I was nervous about like going up hills and things like but that. But when I mean, I learned <laughs> where I live and where I grew up is super flat. You grew up in Colorado. Yeah. I was in Colorado when I was learning to drive, yeah. so, so I had to learn how to get I off steep hills. I didn't have to worry about <laughs> any hills. She's in Texas don't. where it's flat. Texas, it's flat. I can see everything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so give us some power shifts. Oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> Well, I'm gonna turn around because I'm in a neighborhood. There might be kids riding their bikes. No power shifting around children. No. So real quickly, I'd say a few good things about driving a manual is you're, especially in harsh climates, like where it's icy and cold, you don't have to use the brakes on the ice. It's a lot safer just to downshift, which I think is a really good thing. You typically get better gas mileage in a manual, although a lot of auto cars are starting to get a lot better gas mileage, but that used to be like the general consensus with older cars is that the manuals, you'd get those because you'd get better gas mileage. And they still do because you can shift early and just cruise. Um, but yeah, definitely, Harsher climates it is way better to have a manual because you can just da just downshift and not hit the brakes and then you won't be sliding all over the place. Let me show them what it feels like or looks like to stall out. <clears throat> oh gosh, she's gonna stall it on purpose. I hope I can do that on purpose. <laughs> it's always usually an accident, but we'll <laughs> see if I can purposely do it. Okay, so let's say I'm just starting to learn. This happens, I mean it happened to me so much when I was learning how to drive. And you would, gosh, you'd let go of the brake and you let go of the clutch too soon, um, you're not giving it enough gas. So, um, I'll show you what that feels like, Ready? Oh, oh, <laughs> I just, saved ah, it. I saved it set. somehow. Okay, well, let's try that again. But, okay, so a key though that I learned, because you, you can feel when your car is about to stall, is you just give it, you just push in the clutch. Just, if you can feel it and you can hear it kind of like, kind of, 
what's the term? Like it's about to stall out? Yeah, like it's about to stall and it kind of starts to shake a little bit. All you have to do is push in the clutch and it immediately will save, it'll save you. Um, but, so if you're ever in a situation where you're, you feel like you're about to stall out, just push in the clutch and you'll be good to go. I'm gonna slow down, put in, put in third. These are, to, this is bonus racing like tips with Kennedy. Race, race somebody. Okay, well, we'll put it in a second. We're, okay, ready? That was so slow. <laughs> Let me do it from a, a complete stop. Okay, so right now I'm in neutral. I'm at a stoplight, and I kind of know when my light is about to turn green, usually. I kind of pay attention to the lights. And um, so when I, when it's, almost time for my light to turn green I usually always just put it in first to get ready and put my clutch all the way and push my clutch all the way in with my left foot um, and my light is about to turn green that's a green arrow get in there hopefully I don't stall out that'd be funny here we go it's about to turn green I can feel it So when you park your car, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna pull over right here, park. Never just turn your car off and get out because that would be very bad. <laughs> your car would roll away. Um, so like I said in the beginning of the video, your emergency brake, excuse this, is your best friend. And you'll pull that up as high as you can get it to go. Um, and then when you turn your car off, I always, put my car in first gear. Okay, so if you guys want to get the best gas mileage, you should probably switch gears around like we just said, 2,500 is usually, I think the cars, honestly, they already recommend 2,500, but older cars, they don't have a recommended like little arrow when you should shift, but 2,500 usually gets you good gas mileage. Plus it's not too early where the car's gonna bog out and it's not too high where it's gonna kill your gas mileage. But if you need to go faster, obviously you're gonna switch gears above that RPM, but that's kind of just dependent on how fast you're trying to go. If you go lower than 2,000, usually that's too low and the car will probably bog out. So 2,500 is kind of like your average go-to number when you're looking for an RPM to switch gears at and that'll get you the best gas mileage, honestly. So that is Kennedy's point of view, showing you guys how to drive a manual. Maybe that'll be good for like a female, teaching a female if you guys have like a daughter or a wife or someone related to or a friend that wants to learn how to drive a manual from a female. There you go. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. As always, make sure you follow Kennedy at Kennedy McCall on Instagram and Snapchat. Follow me at Bambi39. Make sure you guys hit the thumbs up on this video if you liked it and you can share it with a friend. Subscribe to the channel and we will see you guys on the next one.